Hi Knitters, it's Christina here today on March 25th. It's snowing outside. Uh, I kept on hoping that spring would show up this week, but it's snowing again. So it's a perfect time to sit here and catch up really fast with you guys. Um, I've been doing a lot of spinning lately. Um, spinning seems to come, I seem to catch the spinning bug in uh, springtime. I think it's because I started spinning in spring. Um, I, I, um, when I first learned how to spin, it was oh probably early on in um, February, and um, I was about 17. And I decided that I, I had been knitting for oh a while, and I decided that I wanted to learn how to spin. And at that time, there was you know, the barest of information out on the internet. This was still the dark ages uh, before Ravelry and all those wonderful resources that we have nowadays. Um, and, oh, YouTube. <laughs> it was before all the videos of how to spin were available. But anyways, um, there were some basic instructions on how to make your own drop spindle using a pencil and a CD. So I made that. And somehow I got a hold of some roving, and I'm not too sure how, but um, anyways, I got a hold of some roving, and I started trying to learn how to spin. And, um, well, you can imagine how that went <laughs> with such primit primitive tools, but um, I was still eager to try more. So I, um, a family friend um, knew that I was interested in spinning and found an article in the Indianapolis Star on this lady who ran a spinning group out of her house and taught people how to spin. And um, so I decided to go because there weren't any spinning shops or um, yarn shops. There was only one yarn shop and they did not carry spinning um, or anything associated with spinning. Um, so I, I went to her house and um, I was early. Um, and she, um, she was in her kitchen and making tea and coffee. And I remember I had to go to the bathroom because I was a little nervous. So I went into her bathroom and her towels were hand, um, hand spun flax and they were hand woven. I was pretty impressed. This lady was my cup of tea. So she was in the care kitchen and her kitchen was a big farmhouse kitchen. Um, and she was making tea and coffee and cookies. And, um, she, um, she was, uh, just delightful. Um, she welcomed me in and she said, well, let's go in and, and learn how to spin. And so we walked into her living room and her living room was beautiful. It was filled with old fashioned vintage furniture and, um, big, big floral prints and against one wall um, were just a bank of windows. And I hear Arthur, so I think Arthur's gonna need to come in and help me finish the story. So I'll be right back. Okay, Arthur and I are back. So we'll help you finish the story. He'll help me finish the story. Um, so um, we walked into her living room and she had all sorts of, of, of uh, spinning wheels against in her living room. She had a great wheel too, which I was a big walking wheel. And she had flax wheels and old fashioned wool wheels. And um, oh, it's just a plethora of, of spinning wheels in her in her um, in her living room, and um, because she had so many wheels, she would offer her wheels um, on loan. Not all of them, but some of them. You could rent them for fifteen dollars a month. So I saw this as my ticket to learn how to spin. So I agreed to rent one for uh, fifteen dollars for the month, 
and learn how to spin. I'm so excited. So she taught me on the wheel that I was going to rent. It was an old-fashioned castle wheel. So I fell in love with castle wheels um, right from the beginning. My parents ended up buying me a wheel for my 18th birthday that year. Um, and they bought me a castle wheel, which I was delighted for. It was, it's a um, Kromsky Mazurka. And um, they don't make mazurkas anymore. Um, they make the minstrel, which the minstrel has a double pedal. So um, the mazurka has a one pedal, but that's what I learned on. So um, I learned on a one pedal castle wheel and um, the two pedals were just uncomfortable to have both feet on the wheel. So it's interesting with how, what you learn, how you learn is often how you feel most comfortable. So, oh, wow, big boom. Sorry for the co-host, but um, anyways, so I started spinning and I fell in love with it. And um, this lady came to the spinning group one day and she was a friend of um, the host, the spinning group host. And she had a, a fiber farm out on the west side of Indianapolis. And she had a bunch of sheep, and she would have a shearing day every spring. And she would, so she came, she came with a bunch of fiber, and she said, I'm going to have this shearing day, and everybody's welcome to come and see the sheep being sheared, and I'll have tea and coffee and donuts for you, and you can um, come and reserve your fleece, and you can buy your fleece, and, and um, so I thought that sounded exciting. So I um, roped my mom into coming out with me, and we went out to the shearing day, and um, it was so much fun. It was in her big barn, and she just she had it all organized. She had tea and coffee right before you went into the barn, so you could grab a cup of coffee and a donut, and you could go into the barn, and you could watch the sheep being sheared. And, um, and um, then in the shed on the side of the barn, you could go and you could pick out your fleece that you wanted to buy. And this, I mean, it was literally, literally right off the sheep. So um, it was still warm and the lanolin was still warm. And she had different colors. She had gray and she had white and she had brown and she had a gray, a gray and white mix and she had black. It was just, it was just gorgeous. So I got my first fleece from her, my first raw fleece which I then had to proceed to prepare. And that was an experience in and of itself, never to be repeated by me. Um, it takes a lot to prepare a sheep and a fleece, and it takes a lot of time. And I know that some people really, really like that, and that's fine. Oh, Arthur's got some yarn. Um, but I just, I, I'd rather spend the time spinning. I um, was in um, school, I went into college at the, at, right after that, and so I didn't have a lot of time. Um, but I would oftentimes spend um, some time spinning because that was just, it was just helpful to relax when I was all tense from um, school. But anyways, fast forward to now and what I'm spinning now. Um, I recently, um, my sister-in-law came back from Germany for a little visit and she brought this huge hunk of beautiful white German cheap top and it's so soft and so buttery um and i've been spinning it up here as a, a bobbin this is all plied and ready to be taken off and put on the nitty knotty and washed and here is some that i took off already and it is just so delicious i spun it to be a worsted weight i have a lot of um shawl weight lace weight sock weight spinning that i've done here's some that I picked up at the Fiber Fairy last year. We tend to have our Fiber Fairies here in the springtime. They are in April and then in June. So I guess that's probably another reason why I get the spinning bug in the springtime. So, um, but hi, are you helping me today? You are, you're being my helper. We're showing everybody our spinning. Um, the another thing that I've been spinning is Mad Hatter Roving. This is by Breezy Manor Fiber Farm, and she's in southern Indiana. You can find her at the, um, the Fiber Fairs, or you can also find her roving at Nomad Yarn Shop out in Plainfield. And you could call them if you're um, and ask them what kind of Mad Hatter Roving they're carrying at the moment, and I'm, I'm sure they could send you some. They, she doesn't have an Etsy shop, and I wish she did, because <laughs> I'd like to get more of this. But um, I, this is the first one I picked up. 
And you can see it's a bunch of, oh, it's yarn and, and angora and mohair and wool from her sheep and dyed and undyed and and locks. She, she puts locks in there. And here's um, some more. After the first batch that I picked up, I um, hunted her down at the Hoosier Hills Fiber Festival in July and June. And I was kind of late in getting out of the house. It was I had to go on a Saturday so that um, my husband could watch the boys, or John at the time. I was pregnant with Arthur. It was his last year. And, um, uh, and I, so I got out kind of late on a Saturday, and I made my way down there, and I went right up to her, and I said, I really love spinning your Mad Hatter roving. Do you have any left? And she said, I have one. I have one bag left. And that was this lovely green. And I said, I'll take it because um, I love green, um, but I love spinning Mad Hatter roving. So um, I was so delighted that she had one bag left. So that's worth hunting down if you're a spinner and you like to spin some fun things. Um, Mad Hatter roving by Breezy Manor, that's, that's worth hunting down. The other thing that I just recently did was some Spin Monkey um, row legs, and I fell in love with doing row legs. I spun this up really, really thin, and then Navajo plied it, so it's nice rounded um, um, yarn, and I, good for a neckerchief. Uh, and probably this will be a neckerchief. I'm really into neckerchiefs, as you can see. I'm the neckerchief girl, but I, I do give I do give some away, so um, I don't keep them all for myself. Um, and so we're permitted, you know, making lots and lots of some things, right? It's my comfort knitting. Let's just put it that way. And then this, I spun up some thick and thin. I was kind of tired of doing just little tiny um, singles. So I decided to experiment with some lumpy, bumpy yarn. And, you know, as a beginner, that's all you can spin is lumpy, bumpy yarn. Yes. Right, Arthur? As a beginner, it's all you can spin is lumpy bumpy. But um, but after a while, you know, all you can spin is lace weight yarn. <laughs> so I had to go look up a video on how to spin some lumpy bumpy yarn. And um, I had practice. The first skein was not so lumpy bumpy. It wasn't so good. But the second skein was pretty good. So I'm going to keep practicing with that. Um, then I decided I really liked the row legs. Um, they were so much fun to spin with. And um, Cheap Street had shown me the blending board that's now available from Ashford. And oh, I fell in love with the blending board. But it's so expensive. Um, and as a, as a stay-at-home mom of, you know, in one income household, kind of out of my reach right now. And I even looked up how to make your own. And you can make your own. Um, and, but still, that can be kind of expensive. So I, I kept on searching. There's got to be some way of making a row leg without hand cards, because I don't have hand cards, and without a blending board. And sure enough, there's a way. You can make it some with um, top, prepared top, and a dowel. So I'll, I'll link that video for you so that you can see it too. Uh, I didn't have a dowel, but I did have a number 10 or number 11 knitting needle. So I made a roll leg with the knitting needle. Pretty, I was pretty impressed. And um, I spun up a little test sample. I put together some merino and some Shetland, which you're not supposed to mix fibers. See, I had a short and a long staple. But it kind of came out fun. So... You know, rules are there to be broken, and I um, I really like it. So I'm going to experiment a little more with that, and I'll have to show you the results, um, come back with the results sometime. Um, but the next thing that I am going to put on my wheel is this lovely spring bat that I got down at Sheep Street. And you can see it's this lovely shade of, um, oh, I don't know, greens, spring green, it looks like the, the color of brass, and um, 
and um, the color of lilac. So it kind of looks like a lilac bush in blossom. So I'm really excited about spinning that. That's 100% Shetland and it's so soft, um, unlike most Shetland that you, you get to feel. And um, she said that that was because the sheep are well taken care of and have a good diet, which is interesting. Um, I didn't realize, although duh, you know, diet and nutrition is very important to a sheep to um, have a good soft coat. So I'm really looking forward to spinning that. So, um, and when, you might ask, when do I get time to spin? <laughs> yeah, um, I've been, I have, had, I have my spinning wheel down in the living room and I make it a point to go and spin for at least 10 to 15 minutes after the boys are in bed. Um, it's kind of a good break for me. It's a good mindless time um, and just really helps me calm down from a busy active day with two boys. So it's really, you know, 10 to 15 minutes every day. That's it. But 10 to 15 minutes every day does eventually add up. Um, but it's a time that I've just found that I needed just to, to relax from the day and it helps me um, regroup. So anyways, that's when I find time. <laughs> um, so that's it for now. I think this little active guy wants to go crawl around. What do you think? Do you think this little active guy? Do you want to go crawl around? So we're going to say goodbye for now. Happy knitting. Happy spinning. <laughs> you don't want to go, huh? And we'll catch you next time.